Welcome back to the Backyard Professor Chess videos. I have a fantastic game with... We are going to go fishing. Whatever. Alright, lousy pun. Ha ha, laugh it off, cupcake. Okay, I'm going to play a game with Bobby Fisher. He played Geller. This is in 1961. And again, it's another Rui Lopez. So, I mean, you know, as we play through the Grandmaster games... We get to see how they handle the openings, the middle game, and the end games. And you go, duh. <laughs> but no, really. It's fun to see how the Rui Lopez has been played through the years, as well as other openings. So let's see how Fisher handles one of the Russian great players back in 1961, the year I was born. Because it is a Rui Lopez, of course, Geller is... Fisher is the white pieces, Geller is the black. And Fisher continues doing the Rui Lopez, and he continues doing the Rui Lopez, and he continues doing the Rui Lopez. Holy cow, we're nine-tenths away through the game already. I'm kidding. Okay, now this is... He's... Geller is properly supporting that central pawn, yes. And he does open up the diagonal for his other bishop, yes. So... Things are going good. Fisher has already, and this is one of the characteristics of the Rui Lopez, White can castle fairly early on, if he chooses, and of course, Fisher being who he was, chooses, yes, let's castle, and now Geller brings up the bishop to g4. Now, we saw, we saw something similar to this back in the uh, 1800s game with Chagorin, didn't we? So, I mean, this is another, what, 80 years later and all. It's not that it lost favor, even though it wasn't played as much. There are just a trillion varieties here to do. Fisher's comment here is that this weakens Black's queenside. So, he doesn't, uh, he is not particularly impressed when you move your bishop out that far off the queen side, right? So he he said he didn't he didn't think that's a good move at all. And so he'll he'll say make up your mind, and Geller puts the bishop back. Yes. And and this is classical. I say classical. I don't mean classical. Uh, Usually they bump the c3 because when the white bishop is threatened, you want to usually keep that bishop, and so you have a, an escape hole. This also is an excellent support for white's center were he to press the d-pawn. And usually, honestly, in the Rui Lopez, you push the d-pawn if you're playing the white. Truly, so it's a good move. And now an innovation. Queen f6 and Geller, uh, Geller I mean Fisher says, Pff. he gives him a question mark. He says, that is a silly innovation. Now Geller and Fisher noted this in his notes. He said, Geller looked particularly happy with that move. You know, oh, hey, check me out. I'm doing, I'm doing an innovation against the great Bobby Fisher, right? Well, Fisher wasn't impressed with that one either. And he says the knight to f6 is much more sound than bringing the queen to f6. So the innovation is just an innovation, but it is a weaker move. So Fisher wasn't uh, so impressed. Now, he also said in his notes, once he pushed this g4 pawn, he said, okay... I'm aware that I am weakening my king side, castled side. This is true. However, it is because of the lack of development of Geller and the fact that he's got a traffic jam on his own king side that caused me to go ahead and go after him like that. He said, I think I can catch up. He said, I think I can make up for the weakness on my king side. Because Geller isn't going to be able to attack me very, very speedily simply because of the way he's developed. He's not going to have as coordinated a movement with his pieces. 
he steps on his own toes. So let's see how accurate Fisher was in saying that. We shall see. Geller moves his bishop to g6, of course. That's the only place you can do. And now, unlike I was saying, the, the d4 pawn, what this does is it sacrifices the e pawn, doesn't it, to the bishop. And Fisher says this is worth sacrificing a pawn at this point to open up the game. My suspicion, he didn't explain it any further than that. Oh, this is out of his, uh, sorry, this is out of his Bobby Fisher's 60 Memorable Chess Games book. Really a fun chess book, no joke. And it's got Fisher's own notes. It's, it's a lot of fun to play through. Kind of a shoot at the hip type commentary is how the reviewers respond to it. But what Fisher wants to do in opening up the game here, and when he says opening up the game, he means clearing out the center, the center's pawns. Because, well, I'm not going to tell you, I'll show you. <laughs> Let me shut up and play the game, dude! Come on! Show us what you're doing! Okay, this is really instructive. So, Bisher... Uh, Bisher, holy crap. Bobby has sacrificed a pawn. It's a central pawn. What this will do is open up the game so that he can show you why it's stronger to have the game open, the center open, without clogging it with pawns, pawn chains, or outposted pieces, etc. He wants to open up the game, which, in turn, remember, on an open board, it should favor bishops better than knights. Yeah. You want the long diagonal lanes. Now, at this point, Geller's bishop has the long diagonal lane, right? Yeah, now F Fisher's going to hit it with the knight, and so he puts his bishop back to g6. So it's a little bit more of an open game now, and now the bishop takes c6 check. At this point, here's what Bobby is looking at. Uh, he can't castle kingside, not for a few more moves. He's already interrupting his own development because of the way he opened. So it's going to be tough for Geller to get his king to safety. It's truly unlikely he's going to castle on the queen side now. Once, once Bobby sees that problem of the traffic jam, he recognizes he doesn't want Geller to think he can castle queenside, so now is the time to exchange the pieces because that shatters the queenside pawn structure. And that will present a lot of weaknesses, which of course means targets, right? Target! You remember that? Yeah. Now he'll have targets. Weaknesses all over the place. Weak squares everywhere on the queen side. So Bobby is very happy with that exchange. Okay? Just so we understand. And now he continues to open up the center. And here's why. Why do you think Bobby wants to open up the game? I'll just let you ponder that as we play the next few moves. And then it's going to hit you like thunder. Why? Some of you will already know, some of you may not. So let's, let's keep going. Uh, the reasoning becomes excellent once you see what Bobby's thinking. And this, in turn, will help us think in our games through these kind of ideas that will improve our chess. I promise. It's, it becomes crystal clear. So he went bishop c6 check, shattered his pawns. Now he's exchanging the e-pawn and the e-pawn, yeah. Now, first thing to see, pawn islands and a backward pawn. I say backward pawn, not really, but his queen side is not looking good. 
and at the same time Geller's king side is not looking good. You can now really see the lack of development, which is what Bobby was seeing earlier because of the traffic jam on the king side, right? So it's making sense now why Bobby wants to open up the center and let's see what he does. Knight now takes e5 and, you, and he gives himself an exclamation point and you go, that was really stupid. The queen's just going to take the knight. Why is Bobby safe in taking that central pawn, which actually is one of the last central pawns, and now you can see he really has opened up the board, but didn't he just give his knight away? No. No, because if the queen goes to here, Bobby goes to there and gets the queen. You can't put the queen in front of the king, and vice versa. It's advisable not to put your king in front of your queen if there's a rook with an open file. And there is a rook with the open file, and that's the reason Bobby wanted to open up the board so that he could work on the open file, one of my favorite themes of all time in all of chess. Rooks belong in open files. This is the theme we're seeing. Very interesting. So Bobby does open up the board in an exceptionally excellent way. Well, bishop d6, okay, he's finally getting another piece developed. And Bobby says, hold it, I'm going to take that bishop. Notice, Bobby just opened up the center, which means that it gives the bishops long diagonals. So it makes perfect sense that using his short piece, the knight, which is in beautiful position, take away the long range piece because the chessboard is wide open. Right? So take the piece. Take the bishop with the knight. Exchange that with the knight. Do not, if you open up the board, it's not a good idea to let your opponent have both of his bishops. Yeah. Be sure you're ready to get rid of one or both of your opponent's bishops if you either want to open up the board or if the board is open Try like crazy to exchange the bishops. Now you know your targets, yeah? It just, it kind of follows in a, in a simple, basic way. In an open board, take away the bishops and you have an advantage. With a closed board, you take away their knights and you have an advantage. It just, it's kind of sensible. It's simply the structure, the geometry, and the rules of how the pieces move. Yeah, so this is Exceptional Good Chess by Bobby Fisher. Oops, where'd that piece go? Uh-oh, I lost my knight. This is a disaster of magnitudinal proportions. Oh, there he is. <coughs> All right, clumsy today, sorry. Okay, so, and then the queen exchanges the knight. And now... Rookie one check and observe. The, the king is now stuck, which truly means the rook is next to useless, which means Geller is technically a piece down. Yeah. Bobby has all of the power on the open file. He's got the knight that's going to come out, and he's got the bishop that's going to come out. So this is a spectacularly strong move using the open file to pin Geller back. Geller cannot be happy, and immediately he says, okay, let's centralize. Let's bring our knight into the game. It was developed, but it's not about just developing. Let's find the optimal squares, so get that knight into the battle. Yeah. 
And of course, now this move, he can't castle any longer. And he really, 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 really needs to get that rook into play. Did I say he really needs to get that rook into play? It's no joke. He really needs that rook into play. So it makes sense that Geller was going to push the eight five. Bobby could see all of this is what I'm trying to get to. Simply because of the nature of the opening, the nature of the traffic jam on the on the king's side, the fact that he can no longer castle, the fact that the king has no escape square. Very critical. Fisher's rook has sealed the king to just that square. All Bobby needs to do is find a way to check that king and the game is over. That is why he's pushing that h5 on the black because he has to get open. He has to get an escape square, and he also has to develop. Those two powers being behind is not a good thing for Geller, right? So it makes sense that, that okay, now he's going to try to, to play this way. And now Bobby says, hey, it's an open board. I will happily notice what Fisher does here. It is an open board. I will happily exchange both of my knights for both of his bishops, and I will retain one of my bishops. Now, I, and, and I'm emphasizing this on purpose, you guys, because you really want to see the logistics, the, the, um, the, the practical sense of this. Fisher has the bishop. And that bishop makes all the difference in this game. No kidding. So let's watch how this works. He opened it up, the chessboard. He got rid of the center pawns is what it means when you open up the chessboard. Okay, that means it's wide open for the long-range pieces like the queen and the bishops. The knights really aren't that useful. The rooks can be very useful because they're a long-range piece. But the bishop... The only one with the bishop. Do you think Fisher's going to let that bishop just sit there? Let's watch. This is really fun to see. I, I'm really sincerely serious. It was at this point, I think, uh, Fisher shows some long variations. I'm not going to take the time at this point to show you, but it was at this point that Geller quit, look, quit looking happy. Now he realizes, oh, you know what? Fisher really did change both my bishops for both his knights, and he kept a bishop. Uh, that kind of does not help me. It does not help Geller mm, because of the power of that rook on that open file. I cannot overemphasize the power of that. And so, <laughs> we, we rookies, we beginners, we wannabes, really need to pay attention and take notes and say, okay, well, hey, the same effect can be possible in my games if I play my rooks that way. If you're thinking that way, yeah, you're getting the idea. Truly. So let, let's keep going here. Let's keep going. And instantly... The very next minute, here I am ranting and raving. He kept his bishop well. Okay, then put it to work. Fundamentally so. And now, advantage Bobby Fisher. Not only does he have his long-range rook, now he has his long-range bishop. Here we go. Geller is down a piece, more or less, because this bishop is so vastly stronger than that knight ever will be at this point. And he's not done using him yet. So advantage Fisher. You can see what they mean when they say advantage one player or the other. His long range pieces are truly tremendous. And his queen too. Don't forget his queen. His long range pieces are far stronger than Giller. Makes sense. And, and he goes d5, and he said, no. No, that wouldn't, that doesn't do a thing for him. And now he brings another 
long range piece into the game. Now Fisher is activating all of his pieces, fundamentally so, and Geller is trying. He just doesn't have the same capability because of where he has put so many pieces and pawns on his king's side. He can't get the power that Fisher can because he's slightly behind. So it makes sense that he opens up the H file for his rook, okay? That pawn change makes sense. It truly does. At this point, does Fisher come back over to here and start trying to defend? I mean, the queen is here, right? You're going to get a discovered check if Geller can take that pawn. So does Bobby take the pawn back and let the queen take it and go check and then start attacking him? Geller is right on the verge. I mean, within just one move of taking the game now all of a sudden. Because he did open up the file with the rook, giving himself a direct lane to the white king through the pawn. His queen is sitting here across. There's a wicked-looking discovered check coming up if Fisher doesn't do something. If he's not real careful, if he just simply retakes the pawn, the queen can take the pawn and go check. And, and Fisher can't move here because the rook. So he, the rook's going to be able to come. You see the issue here? Geller is not out of the game at all because he sees and knows the power of the rooks on open files. That is why he pursued this so speedily. It's his only option. Truly. Because again, a Fisher's Rook, that King of Geller's is stuck on that one square. Uh, it's more comfortable to have an escape square when you need it. That's what Geller's working for. So all of a sudden, you know, I've been praising Fisher's position, and I think properly so, all of a sudden, Geller is right back into this. Bam. Just a couple of pawn moves and bam. Keep that in mind. Just a couple of pawn moves and if Fisher makes one small miscalculation, the game is over. Geller's got him. That's how critical it is to know about rooks and open files, long-range pieces, when to keep them, or exchange them. In this instance, opening the board, you keep the long-range pieces. Lots and lots of chess lessons in this truly remarkable game. And now Fisher does the, the best move. He is not reacting to Geller's insidious threat. Geller is just one move from winning this game. Fisher, with nerves of iron, says, I'm not going to react. If you find a good move, sit on your hands, look for a better move, was Lasker's dictum. Fisher maintains the initiative. After all, let's look. If you're going to bring your queen to b3, if you're going to bring your queen to b3, and it's closed off solidly in the center from getting to the king, then why would you move your queen to b3 and then forget all about her and start Mickey Mouse over here because your opponent makes a threat? And don't kid yourself. That's a really good threat. That's tough. Fisher continues keeping the initiative he needs his queen to be more powerful, and certainly that 
just screams POWER! What a move, right? Seriously. That changes the tide. Let's see why. It's true. Geller gets a discovered check. But, because Fisher did not take the pawn back, and allow Geller to open up both files, one for his rook, one for his queen. Because Fisher did not react to Geller's threat, but pursued his own view, his own plan, his own strengthening of the strongest piece on the board, now there's not an open file here for Geller to use. And that's all the difference, you guys. He let... Geller take the G and H pawn in the process. It gave Geller a check, but it didn't give him counterplay. It did not give Geller a sustained attack over two or three or four or five moves. It gave him a single discovered check. And that was, that was the difference in the game. Lots of cool lessons in this game, isn't there? Because it kind of all of a sudden swung to Geller. I mean, it's been on Fisher's side, more or less. And then all of a sudden Geller goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. One small misstep and Geller's got this. And now it switched back over to Fisher. Because he kept a cool head. And he said, you know, I have a plan. I, I have ways to strengthen my threats. I don't have to react. And those were dire threats. They came loaded with a clever little trap or two. Fisher didn't fall for it. He kept going, strengthening his own threats. And now look at this threat he's got. Checkmate! If Geller doesn't do something right. So now it's back over to Bobby. One move and game over. A move or two ago, it was one move and Geller was going to win. Now it's Bobby's turn. <laughs> this is a terrific chess game, man. It's fun to see that. You've probably already seen that. I'm, I'm elaborating too much. I apologize. Uh, bishop to g3, the block, the check. And now, of course, rook, rook d8. Yeah. Yeah. you got to bring that rook over there as checkmate. Yeah. And now... From here, recognizing that you have, uh, he still hasn't been able to get an escape square for his king, Geller, right? Uh, he really hasn't been able to activate these two pieces. Not really. Um, it, it was actually kind of shut down here. His queen um, is not ideally placed, I'll put it that way. Clearly Bobby's queen is better. Clearly Bobby's rook is far stronger than either one of Geller's rooks. And it's true, Bobby did not get this rook into the game. I understand that. He left it. Oh, horror. He left a piece undeveloped. I understand that. It was the overall context and nature of Geller's problem on his king's side that made it so that it wasn't critically super duper absolutely have to develop every single piece in chess. Remember, every rule is made to be broken. And yet, Fisher dominates the game. What's he do? Check. Now, there's the check. We know the king can't move. So, it's not checkmate, but the problem for Geller with this one. Geller resigned here. And the reason why is because he now must lose a knight and a rook. And Bobby loses nothing. Really? 
fabulous ending to a good fought struggle that gives us so many cool lessons. I'm going to let you work out why Geller loses the knight and the rook. It's, it's really fun. When you see it, you just go, my gosh, that's just genius. That's fantastic. And that's the minimum he'll lose, is the knight and the rook. He'll be two powers down. So anyway, what a fun game, you know. Great game. And Geller, again, Geller was one of the Soviet all-time greats. Uh, Fisher by this time, by the, I mean, by the 60s and throughout uh, the 1960s, uh, Fisher was playing, I mean, everybody he played was just a superhero of chess. He wasn't playing any morons like me. He was really playing solid people chess. So, fantastic game. So, hope you enjoyed that game. Remember, stay safe, be good, do well, have fun, work hard, get lots of sleep, make lots of money, be really happy, eat very carefully, brush your teeth, yes, brush and floss your teeth, and remember, I will return with another Backyard Professor Chess videos, and... I hope to see you there.